Hello, everyone, and welcome to Zoom O'Clock with your host, Tessie Anthony de Nassau. Today's guest is Ebru Özdemir from Turkey. Hi, Ebru. How are you? Fine. Hello. How are you? Really well. Thank you so much. It is such a pleasure to have you here with me today. And I really appreciate your time. We have been juggling around to find times on your side, my side, because you're just literally an absolute superwoman. I will get into details about you in a second. I just wanted to say it's really, really great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for accepting me. And thank you. It's very nice to see you. And I'm happy to be here. Wonderful. Also, a very big thanks to Jamie Moncton for introducing us, which is very fantastic. It's always good to have good people around us. And I think Jamie is a good person for both of us. He talked so highly about you. So thank you, Jamie. When you're listening to this, Jamie, you are in our heart. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Ebru Özdemir is the chairwoman of Limac Holding, including the investment arm Limac Investments. Since taking up this position in 2007, under her leadership, Limac Investments has expanded operations in the infrastructure and energy sector, and it provides services in energy generation, distribution, sales, and trading. Ebru has over 15 years of experience in project financing and development, as well as public-private partnerships projects. Her expertise led to her election as a member of the Business Advisory Board of the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe Public-Private Partnerships in 2014. In 2016, Ebru founded the Limac Education, Culture and Health Foundation. The Limac Foundation brings all the philanthropic and social projects of Limac Holding under one roof, ensuring their effective continuity. As well as part of the Limac Foundation, Ebru developed the Limac Philharmonic Orchestra, which interprets and introduces Turkish music to a global audience. Ebru holds a Bachelor in Civil Engineering from Bokasici University, I hope I said that right, in Turkey, and an MBA in International Business and Finance from Fordham University in the US. Among a lot of accolades and memberships, she is a member of WEF, the World Economic Forum, of Family Business Community, Community of Chairpersons, a member of the Endeavor Turkey, and so on and so on. Ebru, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so let me start with my first question. Ebro, you are the chairwoman of Limac Holding, as well as an accomplished engineer. What inspired you to enter this industry, particularly considering how male-led it is? What do you believe has shaped you and your success? I'd like to thank you one more time. It's great to be here with you today. And regarding the question, I mean, I'm coming from a prototype family. I mean, desire to become an engineer has become very much inspired by my mother, by my father, and actually by all, by all our family. And seeing them work and study in the construction, in the engineering, made me to become an engineer as well. But my mother, of course, was the, my, my first role model because she was the only woman in her class. And seeing her succeed despite any challenge showed me that my dreams to become an engineer is not beyond me because I'm, I'm just, I'm, 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 because I'm a woman, but I can also be an engineer. So she really inspired me there. And my also experiences of studying in the male dominated environment also pushed me to challenge myself constantly and to do much better than my male peers. Unfortunately, the, the gap here today still exists, but I'm persistent and I'm very stubborn that we will change this in my lifetime and hopefully uh, we'll do much better. And none of us have a luxury to wait a long time before we change this. And therefore my advice to the women who are ent entering this leadership roles is, we have to see the environment around us. We have to look, there, look around the successful women around us. And we have to gain inspiration 
from them to reach our potential. So my actually uh, stories really start with my family. That is so beautiful. And I love it, you know, family first. And, you know, the environment we're growing up is such a, it's such a fertile ground, right? It's like putting a seed in the ground and whatever our parents and our environment teaches us, it kind of helps us already maneuver a little bit into the areas we want to go to. Um, just one comment before I have my next question for you. When I was in the military for the yeah five and a half years I was in, and I was representative of, uh, for Luxembourg at NATO Supreme Allied Command Transformation Conference in Norfolk, Virginia, with I don't know how many generals and not many women, I think I could count them on one hand actually, um, who were there as military and myself. And I was not wearing a uniform. And it is, as you said, you know, I, I, it was really, it's really male led environment when you have all of these this testosterone in one room and you come in <laughs> and they, firstly they all think you're there for coffee i'm sure you have similar experiences as well when you travel and people not always maybe understands that you are the chairwoman there and that you are there that you're the leader of the company when you're coming did you have similar experiences with that yeah yes exactly and you were telling me your story i really had similar experiences it's I'm the second generation uh, and, you know, some people think that I may not be an engineer. I'm probably in the, you know, sometimes in communication or this and that. And then they were looking behind me and in, in the meeting, they sometimes like, oh, you know, yeah, we want to discuss some engineering. And I'm like, I'm here to discuss that. So it's, yeah, I had that. But now I think they get used to me. You know, <laughs> I, I didn't leave the, the table. So they saw me a lot, so they are now used to be being on the table. That is really good. No, and it's it's about that. Uh, it's still nowadays, as you said before, we're still not completely there. You know, it's about being persistent and just say, hey, I'm here and I am here to stay, right? So, um, yeah, no, I, I totally hear you. And it's so funny. It's always so funny when people are like, oh, it's you. Oh, I imagine someone different, older, and I don't know what they imagine, you know, when you, when you show up, it's, it's, it's actually quite funny. So let me move over to the next question. You mentioned that you were very much inspired by your mother to pursue engineering. I'd like to dwell into that a little bit if I can, if you want, because it's obviously a bit more private. What role do you think family has played in encouraging you to pursue your goals? Actually, a lot. I mean, you know, because as you said, the families are the first role models. This is the life we grow up in. And my family, it's like all engineers, uncles, mother, father, my father established the company with his partner from the same class. So he was also actually very practical. He found his partner and his life partner from the same class. And so I always was in the environment. Even when we were going to the summer holidays, we stopped by the site, we make a tour, we eat, and the site food is always very delicious. So I didn't know that actually this time that maybe he was doing this intentionally to make us get ready for that life. So it became like a natural choice to me. In Turkey, we have university exams and all my choices were like civil engineering. I mean, in different universities. And, but you know, you, you just get used to this mindset. The first time I studied people, people who weren't engineers was in my masters. A lot of people from different degrees. And that time I realized that there is another thought coming from non-engineers. So there's another discipline, you know, right? It's like they are really thinking or uh, putting the words, explain themselves in a very different way. So I learned a lot in masters for that reason. And so what this all provided me to opportunity to try to be successful, although you're a few. And the phrase uh, also became very important to me as I see my mother being an engineer and she was very successful. She was in the university. So you can't be what you can't see became very important because I experienced from the first degree that you, from my mother that you can be an engineer. And also my, my father showed me that you can be an entrepreneur engineer and establish your own company with your partner. So this was all became the real motivation behind the Engineer Girls of Turkey pro project because I wanted to show these other women who are not successful enough to have 
engineers in the family or around to show them real su successful role models and mentors so that they have good careers in engineering or in STEM as well. So this is what I have strived to do and will probably continue to do. Very nice. And I love it, you know. Also to say, you know, I don't know, there's always these stereotypes, if I may, if I may stereotype now, because I I know that some people who are listening, they probably um, thinking the same, you know, when you're thinking about um, different countries in Europe, you're always thinking, ah, oh, how was the upbringing for different cultures? And um, I think with the Turkish culture, to hear that your mother was already an engineer is amazing. I think it's, it's just, you know, because my mom, my mom is a mom who was always at home and she was raising us and she chose children over Korea, but then also here in Luxembourg, it's not a society where many women would have been able to do this because it's, it's such a, yeah, I don't even know why. Um, and so it really, it brings me a lot of pleasure to hear that in Turkey, that the women there, right? Just yeah, so leading the way. I think it's fantastic. So um, kudos for your mom, honestly, really great. Um, so of course, it's important to consider that the success has not come without hardship then, right? We talked about before uh, the first perception of people when you meet, meet you, but also stereotypes, right? Like stereotypes, what a woman should have worked or should be working in, as you said, um, not that these are not honorable fields such as communication. I work a lot in communication, but it is true, as you said before, that is often a, a job that is being put towards a woman, right? And um, so as a female entrepreneur and engineer in the business world, what challenges have you faced in the industry? And what would you like for our listeners to take away from your experience? It's, you know, it's, it's not easy. It's like, you know, there's a big disparity. This is what I see in my workplace. This is what I see from my peers. So the biggest challenge is equality in the workplace. I mean, men them dominate the executive ranks and they support each other. So when I started it, I was like, you know, maybe the work is not so nice for men, but I realized that what they do is even in their business travels, they travel together and they always put something to enjoy themselves. So this was like, wow, you know, they support each other. They pull each other to the top, to the executive ranks, mm -hmm. but women face unfair challenges. It's like, they have to really exist. They have to get that one seat and to get that one seat, Sometimes I see that women compete with each other. They're yeah. not after the remaining nine seats, but they're after that one seat and then they want to kill each other. So I'm like, please don't do it. I mean, we need to create a sisterhood. This is what we should do. If we support each other and bring each other to the top, then we'll have nine seats or we, I mean, not, not nine seats, but at least five to five. So this is, this is very important. This is my, one of my big messages to, people who are hearing me, especially the women at the workforce. We have to support each other. Let's forget about fighting with each other or who wants to, you know, sometimes I'm hearing that the women at top, they're not good with the women that, that are reporting to them. This should stop because we have to increase the women in the workforce at sea levels. I love it. And I'm so with you. When I was speaking at, at a conference, I will not name the name of the conference, but it's a very well-known social media provider. Uh, I was speaking on stage and they asked me what was my biggest obstacle in life, let's say private and in, in business life. And it is, as you say, my biggest obstacles were other women who did not like me to succeed. Um, a lot of jealousies, a lot of cat fights. And uh, my husband, who has created his own companies, built them up and sold them and all of these things, he had a lot of women on his board already since decades, right? So he's very innovative in that field at the time. Now it's kind of like becoming a normality. But he said to me, my biggest problems with in the company was always HR dealing with women that are fighting with each other. And he said, you know, 
it's all about, yeah, let's empower each other women. And he said, but until women understand that we need to pull each other's chairs to the table and that we're all in this together and that a woman doesn't need to suffer the same as another one in order to have the same accolades, that it is okay that another woman gets the job easier than you did. That's absolutely fine as long as someone else gets it after you, right? Which is female. Exactly. So um, I'm totally with you. I, I am so happy you're the first woman ever to say that, ever, on all my podcasts, on all conversations. And I'm so happy you did. So yeah, my sister from another mister, I knew we would get along really well. This is fantastic. <laughs> on this topic, I, I am, I'm thinking all the time, you know, how come all the, you know, if you look at the school degrees in primary school, girls are better. Secondary school, girls are better. But some, but during their career, they lose this. So I'm like, how come the women cannot transfer this success to the work at to, to the sea levels? So this is one of my uh, you know things that I or, or thoughts that I've reached. I mean, the sisterhood is a big issue. Well, I'm with you. We should definitely brainstorm on that more. And I have created a sisterhood called Vitamin W, which is now in eight countries around the world. So we should definitely talk because it's yes, exactly about that. This is the yeah. other thing we should do. Hundred exactly. percent, you know. And to all the women <laughs> listening here, you know, we're here and we're in this together. I think it's fantastic. Of course, all the men as well. We need to build a side <laughs> together, right? 50 50. You know, it's not about competing, it's about complementing, right? So exactly. um, they ask me when you will you will going to you will continue to do these projects for women empowerment. I tell them till we have the equality. I mean. Till yeah. we reach that level, we will be uh, continuing to support. I think we're not going to see the light of day for that to happen. But I think if we do it now, our children can fight yeah. these battles and continue for us, for sure. So <laughs> really? um, we're running out of time already. Oh, no. I will go to one question that I think is really, really, really important. Um, and it's one of my last questions exactly because we only have three minutes left. Um, so yeah, we talked forever. about, um, <laughs> we talk, I know it's just time flies, right? This is fantastic. Well, I need to have you on the podcast again for a second round. So to any young girl out there who may be thinking of pursuing STEM but feels any doubt, what piece of advice would you give them? I would like to say one more uh, thing from my thoughts on women empowerment and then uh, answer your question. The other very important thing is the confidence. I mean, I see a lot of men who lack of talents or lack of five out of 10 talents and still they think that they can do it. Women, although they have all the talent, they're like, no, 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 maybe I can't do it. So this is the other thing we are trying to do. It's same as th thing is valid for STEM. You have great, you are great in maths, you're great in science, you enjoy STEM, but then you want to pursue it. But then you, you can't think like, I, oh, sorry, I can't do it because I'm a woman. So this is not acceptable. So if you have a dream and if you'd like to become an engineer and then you have to enjoy it and you have to pursue it in a very stubborn way and in a very self-confident way as anyone else. So there, don't forget that. This is the other thing. I mean, you may not have enough funds. You may not have, you don't, you may not know a lot of people that moment, but don't forget that there are people in the world out there who will help you to pursue your dreams. So don't lose hope, have the self-confidence mm -hmm. and please take the support of the other people. It's very yeah. nice to ask for help. Exactly, exactly. It's beautiful, you know, because there's so much resources out there online, but also your community, your tribe. And yeah, there's nothing wrong in asking for help. You know, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful thing that that you reminded all of us. So my dearest Ibru, we have run out of time. Time flies, but I will make sure that I put your contact details below as well that you can share with me, maybe from the foundation which I will put everything of the foundation below because we haven't even started getting into the foundation yet. Um, but I will definitely want to hear more about that. So I will put it below already for everyone else to read and we will reconvene for a second podcast, maybe <laughs> on the foundation. I think that would be really good. And um, yeah, 
any last words for you, for anyone listening here? Before yes, we my favorite book. I'm gonna tell you my favorite book before I leave. Yes. My favorite book on earth is The Little Prince. You know, Antoine Sanix is a very it's written, it's a very famous. The reason why I liked it is because I see the open mindedness there of the child who is curious and who is always asking questions. I mean, he's not stopping himself from asking questions and inquiring. And there's a big vulnerability there. And so it's it's good to be vulnerable. It's okay. And it's good to ask questions and inquire. So anybody who wants to reach me, please, I'm here to help. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ebru. And I wish you a good rest of the day. Same. I wish you the same. And it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>